Welcome to the Folktale Project. This is Dan Scholes. Today we have our final story from Charles Skinner's Myths and Legends of Our Own Land, Volume 2. And this story is another tale of a drunkard, but my, it is, it is different. It's also a very American story of a fairy circle. This is Roistering Dirk Vandera. In the days when most of New York stood below Grand Street, a roistering fellow used to make the rounds of the taverns nightly, accompanied by a friend named Rooney. This brave drinker was Dirk Van Dara, one of the last of those swag-bellied toppers that made merry with such solemnity before the English seized their unoffending town. It chanced that Dirk and his chum were out later than usual one night, and by eleven o'clock, when all good people were abed, a drizzle set in that drove the watch to sleep in doorways and left Broadway tentless. As the two choice spirits reeled out of a hostelry near Wall Street and saw the lights go out in the taproom windows, they started uptown to their homes in Leonard Street. But hardly had they come abreast of old St. Paul's when a strange thing stayed them. Crying was heard in the churchyard, and a phosphorescent light shone among the tombs. Rooney was sober in a moment, but not so Dirk Vandera, who shouted, Here's sport, friend Rooney. Let's climb the wall. If the dead are for a dance, we will take partners and show them how pigeon's wings are cut nowadays. No, exclaimed the other. Those must perish who go among the dead when they come out of their graves. I've heard that if you get into their clutches, you must stay in purgatory for a hundred years, and no priest can pray you out. Bah! Old wives' tales, come on! And pulling his friend with him, they went over the fence. Hello, what are we here? As he spoke, a haggard thing arose from behind a tombstone, a witch-like creature, with rags falling about her wasted form and hair that almost hid her face. The twain were set a-sneezing by the fumes of sulphur, and Rooney swore afterwards that there were little things at the end of the yard with grinning faces and lights on the end of their tails. Old Hollands are heady. Dirk began to chaff the bedlam on her dilapidation, but she stopped his talk by dipping something from a cauldron behind her and flinging it over both of her visitors. Whatever it was, it burned outrageously, and with a yell of pain they leaped the wall more briskly than they had jumped it the other way, and were soon in full flight. They had not gone far when the clock struck twelve. Ah, there's a crowd of them coming after, panted Rooney. Ave Mary! I've heard that if you die with the witch broth being thrown over you, you're done for in the next world, as well as this. Let us get to Father Donegan's. Wow! As he made this exclamation, the fugitives found their way opposed by a woman who looked at them with immodest eyes and said, Dirk Van Dara, your sire in wig and bob turned us Cyprians out of New York after ducking us in the collect. But we forgive him, and to prove it, we ask you to our festival. At the stroke of midnight the street before the church had swarmed with a motley throng, and now came onward, waving torches that sparkled like stars. They formed a ring about Dirk and began to dance, and he, nothing loath, seized the nymph who had addressed him and joined in the revel. Not a soul was out or awake except themselves, and no words were said as the dance went wilder to strains of weird and unseen instruments. Now and then, one would apply a torch to the person of Dirk, meanly assailing him in the rear, and the smart of the burn made him feed it the livelier. At last, they turned toward the battery as by common consent and went careening along the street in frolic fashion. Rooney, whose senses had thus far been bent in stupor, fled with a yell of terror, and as he looked back he saw the unholy troop disappearing in the mist like a moving galaxy. Never from that night was Dirk Van Dara seen or heard of more, and the publicans felt that they had less reason for living. And that is the story of Roistering Dirk Van Dara, a drunkard in old New York who, after a night of revelries, meets a fairy circle of sorts and ends up being dragged up the bowery never to be seen from again. 
This is Dan Schultz for the Folktale Project. Don't forget that you can subscribe to the podcast on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Google Play, Overcast, anywhere you like to get your podcasts. You can follow us on Twitter at Folktale Project. You can find us on Auto Radio, TuneIn Radio, iHeartRadio, Spotify, anywhere you like to listen. And you can always head over to folktaleproject.com where you'll find a new story waiting for you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. We'll be back next week with three new tales. As always, thank you so much for listening. And if you do enjoy the show, please head over to Apple Podcasts and leave a rating and a review. I appreciate it. Stay safe, and once again, thank you for listening. <laughs>